a uh, question uh, any non muslims from the lady side who have come up, who has come up we maybe if not then we will give a chance to this gentleman Salam any ladies alaykum, brother zakir uh, i have a pretty simple question which i believe is actually relevant to today's topic First of all, Ramadan Kareem to you too and everyone else here. Alhamdulillah, we've had the opportunity to have another month of Ramadan in our lives. Uh, the question actually is, uh, if I were to take today's lecture of yours uh, about the men's hijab and I were to explain it to someone else, to a Muslim or non-Muslim brother alike, and if he asked me this question, you say that there were 70 major sins, right? According to one of the imams, I'm sorry, I don't recall his name. Uh, well, a major sin is considered a major sin because it has some repercussions, right? Now, for example, murder is a major sin. It's because you are murdering someone. Murder is a major sin, so you're murdering someone. Shirk is obviously the first major sin, which is because you're, not, you're worshiping someone other than Allah. Now, what is the repercussion of actually keeping your trousers above your ankles? I mean, uh, someone could argue that, does it, is it because you might trip on it, or is it because it carries dirt along with it? Oh, obviously, that's your question to answer. The brother asked the question that from this lecture he came to know there are 70 major sins in Islam and he can understand murder is a major sin because it hurts someone. Correct? That's what he yes, said. Exactly. Murder. And shirk is a major sin because yes. you're washing somebody. But when you're doing shirk, you're not hurting anyone. When you're doing shirk, it's a major sin. You're not hurting anyone. Only thing you're disobeying Almighty God. So the biggest sin in Islam is shirk is that you're worshiping somebody else beside Almighty God. But when you're worshiping somebody else beside God, you're not helping him, you're not harming any other human being, but you're disobeying Almighty God. Similarly, as far as the trouser is concerned, you're disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger. The Quran, uh, sorry, in the hadith, as I mentioned in Bukhari, there are no less than five hadith in Bukhari. In, in, in Sahih Bukhari, it says in volume number seven, in the book of death, uh, chapter number four, hadith number 5787, that the, if the izar is below the angle, it will burn in fire. And the next four hadith of Sahih Bukhari, one number seven, in the uh, book of death, chapter number five, hadith number 5788, 5789, 5790, and 5791, that Allah would not look at you on the day of judgment if you were out of the below of the ankle. And it also says, that all those who trail their garment with pride and arrogance. So this, at that time, it was a sign of pride and arrogance. Therefore some scholars say, oh, so if you have a trouser below the ankle without pride and arrogance, yes, you can do it. Fine. So what you have to realize, that if it's a commandment of, of uh, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that Allah will not look at you on the day of judgment, and Allah will punish you, if you wear the trousers below the ankle. We may know the reason, we may not know the reason. What we have to realize that it was a sign of arrogance. Today, if it is not on, it is. It doesn't make a difference. If it displeases the messenger, if it displeases Allah, that is sufficient for, for a Muslim to obey the commandment. What people start thinking logically, oh, logically fine, you know, I am putting my trousers without pride. You may say that. No, that means Abdullah ibn Omar. May Allah be pleased with him. Do you think that he was doing his pride? Can you say you're better than Abdullah ibn Omar? May Allah, can you say that? Of course not. And no Muslim today can ever say he's better than the Sahabas. Because the Sahabas are on a different level. The Ambiya are on a different level. The messengers are on a different level. The Sahabas are different. So at that time, Abdullah ibn Omar, may Allah be pleased with him. He didn't have pride. But yet the Prophet said, up, trousers up, trousers up. The hadith of Sahih Muslim. So that means some people who argue and they say, no, no, we are keeping it with, we are keeping it below the ankle and we don't have pride. Now whether you have pride or you don't have pride, the reason you are not following the commandment of the Prophet itself is pride. And you tell me one thing, if the True. option is there, that tomorrow you come to know wearing the trousers is wrong, if you come to know on the day of judgment, can you undo it? Of course not. Allah will not see your face. Allah will punish you. So even if there is a doubt, it's right or wrong. It's a Sahih Hadith of Bukhari. It's a Sahih Hadith of Muslim. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. How are you? MashaAllah, we have Pitaaz Sheikh Yusuf Pestis. MashaAllah. So even if you doubt, 
whether it's right or wrong. Wearing the, I'm asking you, does it trouble you wearing above the ankle? No, of course. Yes, you may look like a joker. <laughs> you may look like a joker, I may look like a joker, but if you are willing to look like a joker for Allah and His Rasul, what is the problem? That itself shows that you have pride. Today, if a Muslim comes to me, I know that there are many scholars who tell that wearing the trousers below the ankle is not haram. So the moment that itself shows that you cannot put your trousers above the ankle, then what love do you have for Prophet and his Rasul? What love do you have? Even if it is, suppose, nowhere does the Quran say that if you wear the trousers, you'll burn in hell, no? So even if you put above the trousers, if you put the trousers above the ankle, and even if it's not required, what is the problem? If you come to know tomorrow, when you die on the day of judgment, that wearing was wrong, you cannot undo it. It is, I see, the other thing that is difficult. In this, there is no difficulty at all. There is no pain. Only thing, you may look like a joker. Is it costing you more money? It's less costing work. you less money. <laughs> Correct? It's yes. not. Only thing that you may not look good. There is no pain in that. There is no difficulty in that. Fine. The reason you may trip or it may get dirty, that's all secondary. That's not at all. Just because Allah said it and because the Prophet said it, we have to believe in it. So this is the sign of a believer. And this is the label. If the label shows the intent, wear it. And if wearing the trousers above the ankle makes people firmly believe that I'm a Muslim, then what is the harm in it? Hope that answers the question. Yes, just, uh, is there, I mean, irrelevant to this, is there any scientific uh, benefit to this? Is there any scientific Reason. You're a medical doctor, so like, no. There are many people who claim things which I don't think so it is right. There are people who claim, you know, that if you were above the ankle, then sunlight comes and all this. Atiullah fi Rasul. Obey Allah and obey the messenger. Allah said it, messenger said it is sufficient for me. I don't require any proof. If it is it's helpful, for me I don't require proof. It is a commandment and it is surely a sign of arrogance. Some people may believe or may not believe it is a sign of arrogance. It was in the past. That's the reason when you see the kings and the, and the rulers, they always had the rope, you know, trailing around behind you. Yes. It is a sign. Today it may not be that relevant, but if it's not relevant, why are you putting the trousers below the ankle? Sir. That's the reason at least in India, mashallah, Muslims go to pray. What they do besides wearing a cap, they put their trousers above the ankle. Mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah. So at least while praying, they put their trousers above the ankle. Actually, there is no relevance that while praying you have to put your trousers above the ankle. Generally, you have to wear trousers above the ankle. That is the rule. That is the commandment of the Prophet. And Allah will love you and Allah will, inshallah, look at your face on the day of judgment. Thank you. And the hadith again of Sahih Muslim which I quoted. Volume number one in the book of faith. Hadith number 293. Allah, three categories of people. Allah will not look at him on the day of judgment. Allah will not praise him. And Allah will punish him. The first category is those who wear the izar below the ankle. The second is those who send reminders of the favors. And the third is those who sell things with false oaths. Hope that answers the question. No, it. So, inshallah, next time I'll see you with beard, cap, and trousers below the inshallah. ankle. Inshallah. Trousers above the ankle. Inshallah. There's a light beard already, so hopefully it'll let it Sorry? This time. There's a light beard already. Hopefully it is there, but hopefully time. it's a strong label. Inshallah. You know? inshallah. Strong label for. I'm only 21, so it's going to take a bit of time, man. Sorry? I'm only 21, so it might take a bit of time for it to grow full. Inshallah. 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 Okay. You'll become the real Superman, brother. Zakallah <laughs> khairan. <laughs> okay, sure. She wants to know why Muslims are asked to say Assalamu Alaikum only to Muslims when it's a religion of peace and should wish peace for everyone. Though it's a question coming in the ending of the question answer session, it's a very relevant question. It's a very important question. And without this question, I feel the topic would have been complete.